everyone tired metal Hard weatherman here welcome back this is part two of the two piece for today we uh have a little bit to talk about in regards to the weather pattern ahead here too because after all the severe weather that we had today the winter weather we're going to be having tomorrow really the question is what what lies beyond this and i'm just going to tell you depending on who you are and where you are you might like it you might not either way keeping you updated here hopefully you guys hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new here and also hit that share button hopefully we can get out to some more people because the information on this video is going to be crucial to planning leading up to the holidays here so that being said let's get into things so in case you missed uh, this morning's video we talked about the severe risk for today that's about as expected here a few tornadoes were possible over here this has mainly been towards the uh alabama florida georgia's tri-state region and then a few damaging wind reports over here towards uh north carolina there's been a few tornado warnings over here too but nothing confirmed down at the moment we'll see if this uh continues or not if we look at the uh, hazards right now there the uh, tornado watch is about to expire here we just uh, have wind advisories at this point now so severe weather is winding down for today and then after that in the near term it looks like we're going to have a break from severe weather from days four through really six and then seven and eight we might have to watch those so that will be once again towards the weekend here so eyes open for that but we're going to go ahead and switch over to the model data here where we look at the gfs and the euro we kind of go from that point all right so here we are looking at the uh latest gfs to the right here and this is the 12z euro to my left here so basically we're looking at this trough finally starting to exit out but it's not going to come it's not going to leave without bringing a uh, cold air into play for the eastern half of the u.s here so with that ongoing here it looks like uh for the most part monday is going to be pretty frigid over here and for a large part of the country is going to be frigid here both the uh, Euro and the GFS are kind of running towards that solution here. Eventually, we do snap out of the uh, cold spell that we have here, but not until we see yet another storm system trying to come into play here. You can see this uh, upper level low trying to develop here as we head into Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. And then eventually, this will uh, start to ramp up as we get towards the weekend here. This is going to end up causing some issues for the southeast in particular. But for the most part, I think the rain is going to be much further to the south. This could be a more of a Florida-esque system here as well. GFS is pretty much kind of showing the same thing with that in regards to uh, the early run here within the first 10 days. But uh, some interesting notes here is with this new run, the uh, progression's a little bit faster and a little further to the north here. So we'll have to watch and see what the uh, outcome is with this. Of course, we'll look at this at the uh, mid-levels as well at this point. A little too early to try to look at the uh, lower levels of the atmosphere. But this gets out, out of here, and this is when we start to get into that holiday week and time frame. This is when we see yet another strong upper level system coming in over towards the uh, northwest, and it's going to be starting to make its trek across the country here. Another big trough develops, and this looks like it's trying to take negative tilt here. This is exactly what we saw with the last system, that, or the system that we're still dealing with right now. So I'm going to be watching this one very closely. Keep an eye on this uh, particular area right here where you see that contour forming a circle. That's an upper level low. Depending on where this treks in the progression, we could have a negatively tilted trough that could bring severe weather and winter weather. Or we could have a positive trough that brings severe weather and winter weather. Or we could have a relatively weak system. Of course, we're looking 300 hours out, so we're in no man's land pretty much. But as time goes on here, as we start to head towards Christmas itself here, you can clearly see east is going to be looking cold west might be a little bit warmer but the northwest will be active here so we're going to be uh dealing with quite a bit here in regards to in regards to uh changes as we head towards the holidays here so be on guard because this could uh, come into play for your travel plans here for sure go ahead and switch this over all the way to the uh, 500 which is the mid levels and we'll see those uh, low pressure areas a little bit more uh, clearly with this so when you see them in the upper levels it there's some validity with it but when you see it at the lower levels it definitely will get your attention more 
especially at this level in 700 millibars, which is about 20 to 30,000 feet up, depending on which section you're looking at here. Here's that Florida system there as we are heading 240 hours here. But I do think the progression might be slightly slower on the Euro in comparison to the GFS here. A couple really big systems come into play on the GFS here. I'm going to pause this so that way you don't you don't sink too too much at once here. But in regards to uh, down the line here, there's a particular point that I want you to pay close attention to. So here's the time frame on the uh, left top left corner of the screen here. Here's that big storm system around the 22nd brings a lot of cold air with it. Not quite enough to cause wintry weather at this current time, but it could be quite the severe weather producer if this plays out. But also keep an eye on uh, this system behind it. This one, I'm a little bit more concerned about it bringing more winter weather along with it because this kind of has the look of a trough ejection here. Maybe the early stages of it on model data, but like I said, we're so far out. We can't really uh, put a lot of uh, merit into it right now. But look what happens if this scenario does come into play. A lot of frigid air by the mo by a Christmas morning, Christmas Day morning to be exactly, be uh, completely exact, starts to really dig towards the south here. Now, like I said, given the fact that we are looking over 300 hours in advance, it's prone to change, but just how much we're still uncertain of because this could either dip further to the south or retreat to the north. So very open-ended uh, outlook here. I wouldn't even call this a forecast at this point. But let's go ahead and also take a look at these air masses here. Start out with the Euro. No surprise here behind our current system. We have plenty of cold air to go around to start the week. But just as quickly as that hangs around, that moves out. We get a little bit of warm air coming back into play. And this is where the chances of severe weather kind of return here. This colder air mass is holding up pretty well and really starts to deepen as we go towards the weekend. I really think this is favoring more of a coastal event in particular. And maybe on the north side of it, you could get severe. But as time goes on here, Florida looks like we could get some uh, heavy rainfall over the course of the weekend. Could even be a flooding type setup. But um, we're going to look into that more as we close in on this day. On this uh, particular event here towards next week. Make our comparison with the GFS. Pretty much a similar outcome. A little bit quicker progression here. Because here comes that system about a day earlier. By the time we get into Saturday, it's arrived, and by the time we get into Sunday, it's on its way out. But this low really starts to deepen a lot sooner, too. So it's going to be interesting to see how the progression forms, but also make note of one thing here. This could try to become a nor'easter because we have a cold air mass in place here, and there's cold air right here. So if we can get some good moisture to come in with this, this could be a coastal storm, possibly. As time goes on, we see that big storm system that I've been talking about. This could be the big one for the holidays here. If this whole, if this uh, comes together here, and it really starts to get its act together as we go into the 22nd and beyond. And then here's where we see that potential trough ejection here with this getting kicked out by this next system right here. And this drags in a little bit more cold air with it. And with that, I think we could see a, uh, maybe a Christmas Eve, Christmas day, wintry event over here towards the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes here. Could be pretty significant if this validates. But um, the thing is, like I said, over 300 hours out, you can't put too much merit into it right now. So we're switching over now to the severe weather side of things. We're um, looking at the GFS and the Euro on the dew points. Start out with Euro, of course. And really the main day that I have emphasis on is going to be more towards the end of this upcoming weekend here because we're already at the end of this weekend nothing to really be concerned with right now I don't see much in the way of moisture return starting out but as time goes on here you see that moisture return starting to take shape right around the new orleans area and this is kind of what i was leery of as we go through the day here but maybe towards the florida panhandle here over the course of the next day we could see a setup that's possibly favorable for severe weather Timing of this has to improve on the Euro a bit more, but of course we're a little bit out of date here, but 18s a year only goes about 90 hours out. So this is the best look that we can get from the Euro. 
GFS, however, is pretty fresh. In fact, I started the video just after this finished up this uh, finished uh, uploading all of the hours. But you can see a pretty similar look here. Maybe a little less impressive on the moisture return. But even so, we have to keep an eye maybe towards Western Florida, possibly. We'll have to see how this plays out here. This is just one model run. We'll have plenty more before we get towards next weekend. So a lot of things to kind of take into play here, take into uh, account here, so to speak. Here's a slightly better moisture return beginning to come into play. And this is going to be that for that system in the 22nd. Do think that there's chances for severe with this. I don't know just what, uh, just exactly what the details will be. It could be another Dixie Alley event if this validates. But of course, like I said, a lot of there's a lot of things to take into account with this setup, and then the following setup definitely has that look of more of a wintry type setup here. So with that, also we're gonna see some major fluctuations with the uh, temperatures here. So. Prepare yourselves because some of you might get really cold within the next 10 to 16 days here. So we'll start out with the uh, Euro here. Here's that first cold blast coming from this uh, system that we're dealing with now over towards the East Coast. West is already getting pretty cold and actually looks to potentially get a little bit colder as we go to the middle of the week. And we really don't warm up too much from that point. We get a little secondary uh, blast of cold air coming into the East here. Here's that little warm nose beginning to develop with that system that's going to be potentially offshore here. And then from that point, nice little shield of cold air kicks in, begins to start trying to kick in once again as we head towards the middle of the middle of the uh, 20, the middle of the week, heading towards the uh, 20th here time frames right here on the top left. We go beyond that with the GFS. Obviously, the progression's a little bit different here. And the main thing to make note of is towards the weekend, it's a little bit warmer starting out, but at the end of the day, the cold air starts to prevail, especially as that storm system progresses out of here once it gets past Florida. And here comes the cold air in abundance. Start to see more cold air, and then here comes our system on the 22nd. We get some warmer temperatures, maybe some mid-70s over here towards the uh, Texas coast here upon arrival but i don't know if that will necessarily mean severe weather we'll have to watch that area it's going to be a pretty broad area to watch if this does end up validating but um uh as time goes on here we see that next system come in it looks like it's going to be potentially warmer for the east in regards to uh christmas eve but once that storm system passes it'll be christmas day and down go the temperatures just like for just kidding i love george Foreman. but anyway next things we're going to take a look at here are the uh, lightning flash density on the uh, euro going to kind of try to get a sneak peek at where we have a higher likelihood of thunderstorms in the next 10 days which the gfs had this would be really nice to be able to use especially for the uh longer term patterns here that you would see so of course with that little that little low pressure that's going to be uh, hanging around off the uh, Gulf Coast here, this is going to be where the uh, lion's share of the activity is. Then maybe towards the uh, southeast coast here, the southeastern Atlantic coast, I should say, maybe we could see a little bit of action there as well. And then, of course, last but not least, we're just going to look at everything as a whole, all the precipitation and all types of precipitation. So here's our storm system exiting. And here comes the wintry side of it as we go through the morning. Progression's a little bit different with the Euro in comparison to, the, to uh, some of the convective models here. This is a little bit faster moving than what I was expecting it to be on this particular run. But keep in mind, like I said before, this is um, a little bit more dated and the new model has come in. And this will be within the 90 hour period. But after that we look pretty tame in the short term until we look out towards midwest here's that next system here comes that coastal system it could actually bring a little bit of snow here even towards the uh towards the panhandles here of uh, texas oklahoma here that uh cold air is gonna not gonna really hold out for too long and then of course we'll be watching 
mostly a uh, coastal system hanging off the uh, Gulf Coast and then maybe uh, causing some problems over here towards West Florida. GFS is going to be looking pretty similar at this point. Again, here's the time frame here. Here's that storm system progressing through the uh, northeast. Snow will linger probably all the way until Tuesday morning and then it'll be moving out of there. Could see a little bit of lake effect snow as we start Tuesday night and getting into Wednesday. But for the most part after that, it looks pretty quiet. Maybe some scattered showers are possible. We do see that cold air kind of uh, catching up to that moisture here, but it's mainly going to be towards the mountainous areas of New Mexico. Not really as keen on uh, Oklahoma, Texas Panhandle getting snow here, which which sounds about right, I would say. Here's that coastal system. Here's one coastal system coming into play, and then we have another wave coming right behind it. And this will end up being a big rainmaker throughout the weekend for the south. Then event, but here's the thing: while there's potential for that coastal storm to kick in, it doesn't quite look like it's going to end up being that way because the uh, moisture is looking like it's going to do the classic thing and outrun the cold here. So, right now, maybe not a coastal storm, but we'll have to keep an eye on it because we, like I said before, we're looking pretty far out, and these trends tend to change regularly. So as we continue to go forward, here is that next system that I'm really concerned about. Some snow cores possible on the back side of this, but mostly thinking this is a warm core event. And I think more severe storms would be possible towards the Tennessee Valley, maybe the southeast. Ohio, Ohio Valley can't be ruled out either. Then as we continue to go forward, we see that next system coming in. And here's some snow starting to really develop on the back side of this. If this validates, it could be pretty significant totals. And this holds out pretty well, but course we're really looking for trends more so at this point than anything else here so that being said a uh, lot to watch here we've been calling for an active pattern and here we are we're starting to see it so buckle up and stay tuned that's all i can really tell you at this point but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the video you found it useful if you did you know what to do smash that like button if you end up watching this for the first time or if you've been here for a bit and you haven't subscribed yet hit that subscribe button also hit that share button or save this video too so that way you know exactly what could be lying ahead here as we head towards the holidays. Important time for everybody. I wish you happy holidays and I will see you very soon. It's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. You guys take care and have a good rest of your night.